Hey, this is the Art Life video blog, and this is day 78. I'm Mary Elizabeth of Studio Mono Me. I'm Jacob. Thank you, Mary Elizabeth. <laughs> I'm really excited to be here. Welcome back, everybody. We've had a little bit of a break on the Art Life video blog. Uh, just tr been trying to figure out my life and everything. So we are back. We're still going strong and uh, excited to be here. So Mary Elizabeth uh, paints many things, but you are most known for your animal portraits. Yeah, I specialize in pet portraits, and um, that's kind of my main thing. <laughs> what, uh, well, what got you started into art first? Um, honestly, like, that you... was my mom. When I was a little kid, she was a single mom. She's artistically inclined, and uh, she just stuck some of her studio supplies in my hands when I was about three years old. Wow. And kind of let me go. <laughs> So, yeah. uh, was your mom a, a, a painter? Uh, she did lots of things. I think primarily her niche was illustration and pen and ink, but she always had everything available to me. Yeah. So. And so uh, what did you start off with? Um, you know, it's kind of funny because uh, as a kid, did normal kid stuff, art for family, you know, right. sticker in your refrigerator. Then I became a teenager. I went through the angsty youth phase, so there was a lot of dark and depressing, you know, kind of related to the bands I was listening to. Okay. And then as an adult, I was kind of aimless. But one thing that's been maintaining is I do something called fantasy lady paintings. So it'll be like women as the subject, but really artistic-fied, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, there's some on my website that I've done that I've sold and given away. Um, and it'll always be like a feminine character usually doing something creative like dancing or painting or mm -hmm. something creative. Um, and then the pet portraits kind of ended up becoming a fluke that I stumbled into because I had a friend that saw some of the work that I was doing of just random animals and uh, asked me to do a portrait of her therapy dog, which is a Pomeranian named Sneakers. Okay. And uh, because of that, Lots of her friends started asking me to do pet portraits literally based on their pet. <laughs> and this is Gus. And his portrait's right over here. <laughs> Gus, Gus. Gus, Gus. <laughs> so, Hi, Gus. This is the like, closest you've been to me. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a part of the interview as well. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> so, um, so you have... What was your first portrait? I think... Um, yeah, I didn't, it wasn't necessarily a portrait based on a particular animal, it was just something in general that I was toying with the idea of, and my husband had chihuahuas at the time, and I kind of loosely based a sketch on the chihuahua, let's see if there's any glare on that, <laughs> I've come a long way since then, because as you can see, this is kind of done on paper, there's no texture to it, and I was just kind of blocking in color, experimenting. Um, and then as I progressed and really focused on working from specific animals and photographs of a specific creature, um, that's when I started adding elements like texture and I was kind of scared of it at first. So mm -hmm. I was, I was laying on paint thickly and just kind of like, oh, that would make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Cause not going to lie, I'm kind of OCD, you know, right. like things have to have their spot and it has to kind of be that way all the time for me to feel comfortable. Um, and that did kind of flow into my art, so like everything is, is defined. <laughs> um, when I started playing with the textures though, I found like this medium that you couldn't predict. Because acrylics you can kind of predict if you're not doing anything other than just doing a flat color. Um, with textures, it's like I can aim for a particular texture of the nose or widening an eye or hair goes one way. But when it dries, I don't really know what it's ultimately going to look like until the paint has been applied and after I've inked it and after I've lacquered it. Right. Um, and that's been really fun for me. And I feel like I finally found a, a combination of materials that really work. So if people see that Chihuahua, it's very far from where you get today where it's, it's super textured. And one of the things about my art is I like to lacquer it so that you can literally touch your art and you can feel you know, like the nose and the fur, and then you can kind of see the texture if you put it sideways. That's really cool. <laughs> I 
as I want people to touch it. Like one of the things growing up as a kid, I really hated going to museums and not being able to touch the things that looked like you wanted to touch. It. It's like right. candy. Right. You know? <laughs> Look at all this candy that you can't, can't touch. Have. Yeah. And um, I'm weird. I like the smell of it too. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and one of my customers is a blind lady and I'm actually working on a portrait of her dog that recently passed away. Um, I've done a lot of memorial pet portraits. Um, I really like doing that because one of the hardest things in the world is to say goodbye to your pet. And this is kind of what it looks like halfway in. <laughs> so that's about halfway in. That's after the texture and that's during the painting. And what I do after that is once all the painting is done, I do what I call the inking process, but sometimes it's with different inks. Sometimes if it's what's it called acrylic ink, sometimes I do it with acrylic fluid. Oops. Luckily, nothing was wet. Oh, man. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and then once all that is applied, I lacquer it. I just use spray lacquer. I found a, a brand I really liked, and I'll do like three or four, sometimes five coats, and then it really dries out before I ship it to anybody or give it to anybody. Right. Um, and what that does is that it also protects it from the sunlight. Um, it increases the longevity of the art, and then you can touch it. So, and that's like a big deal. Right. And really easy to clean too. You just take a damp cloth. And that's a big thing too. When you have original art, it gets dusty. Mm -hmm. You're in humid or dry environments. But with this stuff, it, you know, I really feel like the longevity of it. I have people that have had art for me and it still looks as crisp as the day I gave it to them years ago. Right. So, that's, that's a big really deal. That's really rad. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, you also do uh, fan art. Sometimes, yeah. Um, we're big nerds. Um, my husband really got me into comics. And most recently, um, my friend Ashley in Phoenix, Arizona, um, commissioned me to do a Wonder Woman. And she is still drying out, but she is done. <laughs> so, I don't know if you can pick that up on there. That's really cool. There's pictures on my Facebook and on my website. Um, okay. She is also textured. The difference on this one, it's on MDF, not canvas. Um, we did that for cost reasons. Um, but it'll still last as long. Um, it just takes a while to dry out. But um, I do fan art. Uh, one of the ones that's not for sale, <laughs> unless somebody really, really wants it, <laughs> is this tiny little thing of one of the biggest characters that exists in the known universe of Galactus. <laughs> so that's about a three by five, I think. Um, not for sale is one of my favorites. <laughs> it's, I wouldn't sell it either. <laughs> Yeah, it's the first time I was actually really experimenting with inking, kind of in the old, like, Kirby days of old school comics of inking and stuff, so, yeah. But yeah, I also do um, commissioned fan art, but it's really hard for me to just think of a character and do it myself, right. so. <laughs> um, you are working on a piece for a blind customer of yours as well? Yeah, that's the one that we were showing that's kind of halfway in. Um, um, yeah. You were telling me a story about... Uh, she asked you to, uh, she commissioned you to do a bunch of her different... Guide dogs, guide yeah. Dogs. That's um, about the same time when I really was just falling into that niche. And uh, her, the lady that I did the first organic pet portrait for, the therapy dog, okay. her friend Marsha wanted me to do this, like, um, I think it ended up being a four-panel uh, canvas thing that I mounted on a, on a big piece of MDF. Um, for each guide dog that she had had up until the current one, um, which were still around. <laughs> um, and, you know, I was getting a lot of compliments on my art, but the biggest compliment to date that I've ever received that really brought me to tears was uh, they had actually written to me and told me that she could tell which portrait was which dog based on the textures that I put in. And that just is like super confirmed that I was in the right direction and right. I was doing the right thing, that I found my niche. It was, you know, I, just thinking about it kind of brings me misty eyes, you know. So, um, yeah, and actually her, it's the same lady, her, um, 